Hi guys, welcome to another video. This will be a really short one uh, explaining how to scale in Lychee and what are the difference between Cheetobox and Lychee in this regard. So these are two models from Cobra Mode. Um, the one on the left is a Lychee project file and the one on the right is the STL, which I know it's red, uh, it's pinging for some mesh errors, but disregard that. And I'm gonna show you the two methods that you can do, and there's a lot of confusion in people thinking that Lychee doesn't allow you to scale by percentage. It's just a matter of layout, and I will show you how to do it. So let's go with the former route that everyone uh, used to scale in Cheetobox, which is grabbing the STL like this and so and then scaling by percentage. So the way to do it in here is if you go and change to scale on the left side, you will see the measurements, but it's all in millimeters and people are used to basically scale by percentage and this is how you change it. So you go to the units and you change to inches, millimeters or percentage and now it's at 100%. You grab the center square and just scale down or up to whichever you want. So yeah, or just introduce the value you need. So what are the advantage and disadvantages? So the advantages are basically you don't have to do anything else besides this. And the disadvantage is, as you saw, all the supports are merged into the same file. So they are a one piece file, which means when you scale the model itself, the supports will also scale up. And in certain places, then they can scale up to really chunky measurements which will really really be uh, difficult to remove or clean and it will they will damage the model almost certainty so you have to to think about it on the post-processing side of things lychee on the other hand um, allows you to scale the project file and maintain more or less the same supports that you had and i'm going to show you how so you grab the lychee project file and it's at 100% right now. So one thing that Lychee allows you to do is basically go to scale again and you scale to whatever you need in this case. And as you see, the supports are still attached to the same positions, but now they are kind of broken. So what you do now, it's basically you click on control A, which basically selects all supports and you go to the supports tab and click alt r what that what does that is recalculate all the pre-existing supports and into their original position though there's a notice here uh, some will break and you will have to realign them and check for possible positions where the supports might not recalculate properly and they might be fusing to the model or touching it in misplaced places. So yeah, um, if you scale up the, the file, one thing that you can do to reduce this is the way that the program works is one thing that you can do is instead of scaling up as much as I did in all of one movement, just scale up by percentages like 110, then recalculate, then 120 and recalculate. That way the supports will have an easier task in recalculating into a cleaner form. What this allows is to maintain the same proportions of supports that you had in the beginning. So the cleaning up process will be much easier. That said, you have to think in terms of weight. And if you increase the scale uh, beyond, let's say, 50%, probably you will have problems with anchorage. And by anchorage, I mean uh, fixation to the primary layers, to the actual build plate and the supports. So in that case, probably you will have to add a few anchors, uh, heavy supports with 0.45s or even 0.6, depending on the model, on the 
main structural areas of the model. But if it's a minor scale, uh, like 15% or something, you will be okay by doing this process using the control A and the control R to um, recalculate all the supports. I hope this was uh, helpful to everyone. And if you have any other question, just ping us on our Discord and we will continue to release new videos to help you guys out. See ya.